Space Radio Space Radio Space Radio Space Radio This is the last Space Radio broadcast. We cannot reach you with our words because of the way you behave, because of the way you trip your feet and snap your fingers to an inner symphony we cannot hear. Therefore, we must leave you to your fate. This is the last space radio broadcast. We have tried to reach you through your schools, through your journals, your television, your art shows. We have tried through your governments, through your cinema and your town planning. We have even tried through your plumbing, your ten-pin bowling. We have written novels and published millions of books in a language that attracts your eye. We have altered the courses of rivers and put warnings in the lines of airplane designs. We have tried to reach you through the sweets you suck, the videos you listen to, through your partner's roll on deodorants or the flavour of your tea through the kind of glue you sniff, or the kind of rock and roll music you listen to, or the brand of cigarettes you smoke. But it has all been in vain. You have thought it all a mirage, a con trick, or a game. This is the last Space Radio broadcast. Space Radio was launched secretly by a consortium of artists and free men in July 1963, when the dangers of overpopulation and the possibility of nuclear war and death by pollution and urban decay had become an hourly anxiety of our race and forced us to take our drastic action. It was on the day when the stars became a human frontier with the launch into space of our hero, Yuri Gagarin. Since then, repeated broadcasts have been made to you by us, your artists and writers, to warn you of the perils you face. But now, after long trials and the exhaustion of our fuel and the bankruptcy of our souls, we have been forced to concede defeat. This has been the last Space Radio broadcast. And now, the curtain drawn once more, you may continue with your entertainment. These strange things called trees, like missiles thudding nose down in the earth, stuck unwavering like thrown knives, or darts, the alveoli flights, sprayed like twisted limbs in intricate array. Inevitably, like the rest of nature, they will succumb to a grim determination. In their museums, they will look even stranger. The buildings are very low round here, built into the earth. Surely the occupants must suffer badly, getting in and out through these half-filled doors. The air was to blame, heavy with lead smokes, pressing the roofs of the buildings into the earth. Quite honestly, I wouldn't like to live round here. My children would be poisoned. The sunken houses are warning us, don't come, don't come. <laughs>